time. And I want to thank Kavish Gilchem Brothers and Kalal and Adam. He abished himself for letting me sit and talk here with you, Chavra. I have a ball. The boy said, I love this stuff. I want to tell you something. Listen to this. I just got off the phone with somebody. And this happens very often. And I, this is a complicated, you know, a lot of stuff going on. This happens every day. Well, I have this problem. That, I don't make fun of people's problems because I understand them. Oh, boy, do I understand them. I know that. I know where they're coming from. This problem, that problem. Now, the next, if I get you on the rebound. Uh, okay, that problem is taking here. But what about that thing? <laughs> that's not so fast. Uh, okay, that's like here, but, but what about that? It's never ending. I say, if you're into problems, it's called my maluchim. You can keep drinking salty water. You're going nowhere. You're just have, so, uh, the truth is, when I tell people Aitzis, there is such a thing as people listening to me. There's such a bria. But most people <coughs> prefer, just give me one bua and leave me alone. <laughs> they don't say that to me. I say it to them. And they're pleasantly surprised because they are ready to unravel to me a Megillah to Shemayim of, of Peklach and Torahs. And you know what else I have? Uh, did you know what I'm going through? Oh, if you would only know. And then I have this too. And they have that. So I tell them, I'm going to sit and talk to them until Mashiach. I say, watch my bracha work. And I'm dead serious. I mean it. I give a bracha. Next time I call them, how do you feel? Totally different. This happens every single day. Totally different. Since your bracha. You're right. It's a different ball game. Listen to my latest mavis. The Rebbe's mavis. Rabbi said, keep the line. The Rebbe's going to tell over his own mavisim. This is the only Rebbe that, the main part of <laughs> Got to hear my own mavisim. Here it goes. Um, I, the, um, I'm, I was given a phone call uh, last week or so by somebody who's a Chayla Masukim. He's in ICU. He's going like Hashem Yerach. And I'm encouraging, 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 encouraging. A little better. Oh, yes, and this and that. I don't even know. I can't keep up with all these things. I have one after another like this. You know, the Minig, Minig Yisrael is, one of the latest Minig and Kla Yisrael is, just before you say Vidu, you call Mandel. That's, I think they, I heard they put me in the Vidu booklets. <laughs> put Mandel. Before you start this, give Mandel a call. Watch what happens. But listen to this one. This just this is fresh off the press. It just happened last night, so it, it, it getting and, and things are getting better. And I'm so happy. And suddenly, uh oh, the doctor called all the family members. Now what do we do? When the doctor calls all the family members, you know what that means. It means say goodbye. It's all over. So what do I do? I never, ever, ever throw in the towel. Not me. The ladies can cop. Tell the doctor to hang himself. Yeah, he's cook up. This guy is healthy. He's happy. He's, he's gesund. Oh, bother me with this. You're complicating my life. He's getting better and better. That's it. No, no. That's what I, first of all, I do want to tell you. When you talk like that, you're making a mitzvah of having the talk. It's a mitzvah. Mitzvah. Forget you. It's going to work. It's not going to forget that, that stuff. You're getting a mitzvah of being. The power of a mitzvah is not even release of the greatest mitzvah in the world. But tough. Now, that's what I left them off. Believe me, when I got a call last night, I didn't expect what I got. Guess what? The patient improved very much. How do you like that one? Fafamon. I never give in. How do you like that? Very tchakmeni. They say the uh, ancient Spartans, you know, Sparta, Sparta, that's part of, uh, what is that, uh, Greece or Rome? You heard of Sparta, whatever they say, the Romans, the Amalek, the Romans. It's Rome, whatever, they, they were proud soldiers, and a Rome, a Roman never surrendered. That's their, um, their, that's their pride. They were tough soldiers, even if surrounded by the enemy, we are not giving in. We don't do that stuff. We always come out ahead. That's a sheet that there by Rome, I believe. So, I work like that with Yiddish type. I never, ever, ever give up. I'm not interested in that stuff. 
First of all, I get a mitzvah. Not giving up is a mitzvah. It's easy to give up. Let's all give up and let's start crying and sit on the floor and quetch and have pity on ourselves. You see, it didn't work as usually as usual. I'm always I'm always messing up and everything I do is no good. And I have a bad muzzle. And since I'm born, I'm like that. And since my sister used to tease me, it's all her fault. And then my parents numb. Oh, if you would only know what I'm going through. Okay, everybody's got his, his, I don't want to make fun of people's peklach. But when I say ridiculous pe- peklach, if you have your seichel, you'll stag from hearing that. You have to make make them ludicrous in your eyes. Ludicrous. That person I just spoke to, I made them laugh. First of all, I laugh at the world. Lach was dressed back up. What's, what's going to happen? What are you afraid of? You're going to die? So die. What's wrong with that? You know the mice with the Arab? Mat Mat. You know, he's standing on the roof. He was almost falling off and pulling up a dude Shemesh. And, and, and he yelled at him, Mat Mat. You know, in the Arabic, dying is called Mat. So the guy looks down because he's, he's more in the street than he's, he's on the, uh, he's on the map, he's on the mic over there on the fence. And, and eight floors up in the air. And he's supposed to pull up a dude Shemesh. And, and he's, he's bending all the way into the street. And he's eight floors, the guy yells at him, Mat, Mat, you're a dead dog, what are you doing? So the Arab yells back, Mat, Mat, so what? So you die. So uh, what are you getting so much sugar for? So you die. I mean, what, what's, what's the big spiel? So I believe in that stuff. In that area, I go like the Arabs. <laughs> so you die. It's what's stopping. What's the schlock? It's stopping. Yeah, I'll tell you a true story. I'll, I'll, they did this by the war. Yeah. He told me you're dead anyway. Shy, what they shy. He told me you're dead anyway, so they weren't busy about dying. They weren't oh yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. It was good, good stuff. Beautiful book, by the way. Anyway, Rabbi Yadman has a book. They, those who never yielded, Polish, Gerach, see them. Ah, they fought the Nazis. They did crazy walk. His long beard. The guy with Matas Joe was the leader over there. He walked around with a long beard and back and forth. With, he, that's Navarri, by the way. It's the same same school. And they, they faffed on all the, all the Germans. They couldn't kill less. A long beard like this. And, and he didn't care. And he got away with it. He, just, <coughs> he said, we're dead anyway. So who cares? I heard Rob Gershon used to say things like that. We're dead anyway. So what? So let's hop around some mitzvahs. Let's faff them on a little more. Let's daven even though it's dangerous. Who cares? That's a, okay, anyway. But what was I saying? So you die, die, right? So I'm going to tell you a story with... Um, I forgot who it was with. Somebody had, um, I guess, anyway, from, it, it, there's a truth, there's a story with, with, um, a, from a story where somebody was not afraid of, of death and just so, so died. So what? And he survived. He said, so, so died. You're not so, you're not so impressed with, so you died. It was, anyway. The, um, <laughs> you know, there was a Chevroman, I won't say his name, who said he yeah, was in a campaign. He was a, in the Watergate scandal, he was the one person who was not afraid of Chief Justice Earl Warren, his name was, right? Those days, the Watergate scandal, when President Nixon was somewhat impeached, there was, there were, he, he, the accomplices were all thrown into jail one after another. And they spent their life, their careers were ruined. And they were, they were, um, there was one person who was a Chavaman, who was raised to be, um, he was, he had, his mother was a Roman, was from that, you know, Asaph's Anako. Who taught him that you got to be tough, and he by nature was dafka, not tough, and that wasn't the thing to do where he came from. So he worked on himself. He did the following: first of all, he's petrified. He lived in a port city, and big boats used to come, and whenever he saw a big boat, he used to faint. He was terrified. He was a frightened little boy. He couldn't handle it. So one day he decided. 
I'm going to fight. And the next time the boat came, he stood up like this, and he watched the boat come closer and closer, and he didn't budge. Okay, Mr. Boat, you're not starting up with me. I'm tough. Because his mother taught him, you got to be tough, tough, tough. Shut King tough. By yeah, yeah, in the middle of the night, he climbs up a tree. There's lightning. He was horrified of lightning. He went with sugar, rain, lightning, a storm. So Gopka went up in a tree in his backyard, and he stood there to face the lightning. And his father came and said, what are you doing here? He wouldn't tell his father what he was. What are you doing? And so he smiled to himself, and he wouldn't say. And then he went down, and he says, I did another one. And he did a lot of weird things. I mean, a shegetz. But he, he decided to eat a sheretz because he's so afraid of the sheretz. Uh, 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 not a baby-sized sheretz. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. It's too... So he decided, I'm eating it. He did crazy. He once burned his finger. He once did it in, in the office where he was he was working. In front of, he told the secretary, oh, you want to see me burn myself? Watch this. He lit a fire, and his, his, his finger started burning, and he didn't do a thing. He didn't bat an eyelash. Now, this is Koichas Hanefesh. The truth is anybody could do it. I'm not, we're not in such a campaign to do these things. But I want to tell you that there's a reason I'm telling it to you. You're going to hear soon. I'm not just telling stories. I want, it's Kedai to hear this. I'll tell you what else the guy did. Once, once it was once at a meeting and the guy, guy, say, guy stormed and says, I'm going to put the tires out of so-and-so. He disappeared and he took the tires. He was just kidding, the boss. He came back, okay, I did the job. What did you do? I took the tire. I didn't mean anything, you know. Oh, I thought you meant it. He was a real clever man. He went to a school where they, they kill, they, they take you, and the Dafka went there, a high school, I don't remember, with a Dafka Chepa. The younger guys, he went there, and he had, he was all prepared. So he put scotch tape on his, on his hands, and he put, um, thumbtacks, and he knew they were going to attack him in the middle of the night. The new, new kids, they used to Chepa. They used to punch him and everything. So he was waiting for them. And then as soon as he started attacking him, he lifted his dark, lifted his hands and they went boom. And they and they got bl- bloody all over the place. Then he joined the FBI and he learned how to kill people with a pencil, a stick under a uh, all different he, with a pen, how to do this and how to do that. He learned how to shoot a gun. They said, Well now never say, you know. Like his mother, his mother's dreams, you should be a tough Spartan. He, he lived by a story that his mother once told him, that the Spartans, the Spartans, they would die a story of a, of a guy, a cat, I can't discuss it, that he died, a Misa Mashuna, but he didn't open his mouth, he didn't say anything, and by him that was his Ghanaian to become such a person, and he became, he, he did, he, he, he was a suit, when he was convicted, in the Watergate scandal, and he, first of all, he decided to park himself in one of the most dangerous places in the United States, uh, Washington State, I believe, for a certain coup, for a certain part of it, was crazy dangerous, and he decided, I'm going there, in that prison there. Well, no, not the prison. He went to, what, an apartment there, where in the middle of the night, you better watch it, because they have, they killed people in the streets. It's one of those real gangs, Schwarzes all over the place, Dangerous guys, the lowest of the low. So, punk, that's what, that's for me. <coughs> but yeah, young, a big black guy banging at his door, two, three in the morning. And he says, Oh, this is what I'm waiting for. He opens the door, he takes out the gun, and he tells the Schwarzer, Hello, how are you feeling? <laughs> Schwarzer looks at him, What is this? Oh, well, they, they say you gotta be careful in these streets, so watch yourself, okay? I have something here for you. He did these shtick. He was a real clever man. When Watergate scandal happened, the Watergate scandal happened. So there was in all the newspapers, there was there were signs of everybody pointing fingers. You did it. You did it. Every guy. They, they were low. I mean, all the people that fell in, they 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 were spies for, for the uh, President Nixon had a bunch of spies to spy on the, on the on the Democrats because he was very insecure. He had lost the election, and he had a, his past wasn't easy. Rather, he was an excellent president at that point, but he was afraid the next time he's going to lose. Cause, so he had to make a whole spy mice at the place called Watergate, where the where the Democrats ha- have a hangout over there, and, and he sent the spies, and he got impeached thanks 
that whole scandal the he goes buying in Yenna, it was the end. So Bikitsa they so all the guys who were convicted, they used to they, they, they were they were crying and begging, we didn't mean it, but it was his fault and his fault. And he when he came to his turn, he says, Yeah, I'm guilty in that. Which jail do you want to send me? And he was waiting for the worst jail in the country, which is, and, and, and Chief Justice was infuriated at him. The guy didn't seem to care. He says, no, that's exactly what I want. Oh, that jail with all the, the guys there, they're ready to kill you. All the, that's, that's to me, Kazeta Ibakadish. This is my Ghanaian. This is my dream, my life dream. Man. And he went there. And as he was going to the jail, he convicted, went to the jail. He's, and he said, um, on the way, he heard people crying, never what's happening to him. And he said, they were crying, and I was in Gan Eden. This is just what I want, to be in such a matzah. And he went to that jail, and he told his experiences. He had a blast, where the murderers, the guy the guy in the bed on top of you was, was a right sayach. The guy in the next cell was another right sayach. And this guy, was a, 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 he was a perverted mishugana. All those kind of weirdos. And he was a fish in water. This is my life. This is my Ghana. Because uh, I don't know what became of him. I don't want to say his name. But he was a, this is true stuff. I told all these stories over to Rabbi Gedalia Shemer. Zeichet Tzadik Abrach. He was an Elta Bach of Pelish Yidl. Who he used to learn in Lakewood. He never got married. He survived the war, but he never got married. He was sweet. The Yelam loved him. Atamot Chacham and Edelkeit. He was from Galicia. I used to schmooze with him about what he used to be like. He used to tell me about the Midas Tavis or the Rizhen Echsidim. He remembers how sweet those Amalek and Rizhen Echsidim. The way he once opened the Gemara and the Rizhen Echsidim said, Tell him, come, let's try this together. Everybody used to talk with such Zizkeit, Edelkeit. I'll show you a picture of a Molag Yidin, what they looked like with two of them. Listen, one's listening to the other. With these two Hasidic guys, long coats, wearing the, like these these type of, uh, of hats. And one's looking at the other one, and the other one's smiling to him. The Zizkeit, a Molag Yidin, though, sweet. We're, we're guns fine, by the way. <laughs> so let's not, you know, but I've seen things lately. I'm Taka M, flying high. A Ben Tyre, a lake with a Ben Tyre. Come on. There's no one better in the universe. And see them? Oh, they're delicious, these people. All of them. As far as them, all of them, they're all delicious. All of them. Anyway, but but he, um, so. Um, We're the best, no? What? We're the best. That's Pashit. And whoever's listening to Patach, to this, we're all the best. And yet is also the best. We're all the best. Anyway, so the things like this, what happened? I told him about this. I used to ask him about Navarre because he knew Navarre. He lived in Stanislav, Kolomai. If anybody knows what's going on in Galicia, he was from those two cities. One was a bigger one, a smaller one. He said when the war broke out, there was a big, big yeshiva that closed instantly. When the Nazis came, there was a Navarre yeshiva that did not close. It was a smaller one, but they didn't close. Oh no, not us. We're staying open. This is Nevada. And he even, he explained to me what Nevada was. And I told him stories about this this person. He says that person was Nevada. Like I said about about Trump, he was the first. He's the first Gaish in Nevada. I'm joking, but he 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 definitely has a certain you know whatever. How you know there were 22 people. Uh, for for that seat, the last election that he won, when he won, there were 22 people all more qualified than Trump, and Trump got in. How did that happen? Because Trump apocs the world, he does what he wants, he laughs at everybody, and he makes it. That's the so, so he has a certain whatever. It is. Now, the Vatigas did learn. They believed in picking up things from the business world big time. The Marshall, a businessman does not, a real big businessman, big tycoon, <coughs> these big knockers who deal with millions, they have no time to eat or to sleep. That's what Nevada is looking for. That's that's us. To be, just like the Sarikha Magdalim, it says that by those who show him, says you learn, says you never, like these big businessmen, but Nevada just took that through and through. 
every day they used to discuss like the stock market, the bourgeois was called about it. Every day after they learned Musa for half an hour, they would get together. I saw this in France. And they start schmoozing with each other. How's business? I mean, your cost issue is getting better. How's the COVID issue? This, how's your learning? They, they put Koichis Mamish to look for aces just like in business. They, they held like that. They tutor for wealth. Anyway, so he told me that this is Mamish. What Navarik used to do, just like this fellow. Eilam Haba, you don't get for doing things like this, for wanting to be a tough guy. Uh, but when a year does it, we change Shemayim to work at himself. That's Mamish what Navarik was. Rabbi Sai, you want to be happy, do what you don't want to do. That will make you a new person. That will take away all your fears and all your people destroy themselves because they must have, listen to the story, you have to have you this, and you have to have you that, and you're uncomfortable if you don't, but if you're living among people that all they talk about is, what can we do next to cover Shemayim, different than what we want to do. In the mice were in a party game. He was in a house at nighttime. I want you to write about this. Middle of the night, he discovered the husband was supposed to come home, it never happened, whatever. Yichud. He jumped out of the house in his pajamas. I, I added that to make it more exciting. But I don't know if he was in pajamas or not. All I know is it was freezing Russian weather. And the Vardiger was happy to be outside. Yes, I'm out. Freezing Russian weather. I love this. And he probably had in the back of his mind, I would tell this to my Rosh Hashanah, guess what I did today? Shabbat would pat him on the shoulder. That we like. He went against your teva. There were Geshen, they once saw him walking around and they asked him, Geshen, Mata Rabenu, Mata Machapes, what are you looking for? Ani Machapes, Shvirota Midot. I'm looking for opportunities to go against my Midas. He loved it. He was oozing with Simcha 24 7. How do you get like that? What kills you, Simcha? You want some and you're not getting it. Your whole life is full of that stuff. Ruch means gosh means it doesn't matter. Your mind is constantly wanting and not getting, and that kills you. And people want, they want. And we say, they're looking, I'm looking to give my life for the apes. You know what the elder Rodic said? You know, Kiva said when he was they were raking him from Masrakish al Barzel. The Romans were were tearing his flesh and torturing him to death. They asked Rabbeinu, what do you they asked his Rabbi they asked Rabbi Kiva, look what's going on. Rabbi Kiva said, my whole life I'm waiting for this. When can I be Mekayim B'chol Every time he said Christmas, he said, when can I get that? And now I'm getting it. This is Gan Eden. Rabbi Kiva loved it. Now look, I'm just talking in the loft, not in the loft. One of these days it's going to happen. Because when you keep talking, sooner or later, Things not happening. I would like to be my early oilum. The real simcha comes from not doing what you want to do and developing a taste for it. Develop a taste. Look, you know there's a Kabbalah. I saw this in Arach HaShulchan brings it down. All those Jews that were thrown into the fire on Kiddush Hashem about a thousand years, uh, no, two thousand years ago. Thousand, about the time of Rashi HaKadosh. And those few hundred years, crusades, that kufa, they felt no pain. Do you know that? What? Who? Marmar Rottenberg. There you go. They didn't feel the pain. There's a Mike but a guy who hung him on, a, on, a, on the gate of the city all night. They hung him there. And he somehow he escaped. They asked him, how did it go? He said, I didn't feel nothing. I think, Loshlach am I right? So it's one of the stories. I feel nothing. It was great. He was hanging from his chvais bus. They were trying to torture him. I don't know. But that kufa, it's Yudur. They didn't feel, I've read this all over the place. It's Yudur the Kazakh. They didn't feel any pain. Now, what's shot? I don't know. But I'm talking the Vardigas definitely did not have, that's Yudur. They used to get caught, they used to get tortured. And when they got tortured, the guys who tortured them, the Russians, they said, we wish we, it's a Yudur. They said, we wish we could have soldiers like this because the Vardigas took them to the wall. They were steel. 
They were mamish steel. The hard of use of train. I was sitting next to a pesach menachem malach. That's all. He was a garret in Nevada. He was sweet. Like, his face used to shine. He used to speak 200 Sabbath Hasidim in Borough Park. He used to ask him to speak to them regularly. He, he, he spoke. He came in with his, his lungs were not, you know, his whole body was, he had to carry, for, you know, he had a mach. He had to get the zachim. And he used to come into Beis Medish to learn by some other rabbi. In the later years, together with a, with a big pole with, I don't know, intravenous. He wasn't regular, you know, and it didn't bother him. He waited. Oh, it's cold out? That's great. Cold. Let's go. You know the famous Meiser? I think it was Rav Khan, the one who started Gates at Yeshiva. He was a Nevada guy. He was got a very Masilidic, crazy Masilidic. Now they say, I believe it was him. It was a Nevada guy. It's a famous story. A Nevada guy came to get money for Nevada and he went all the way to, he went to, um, Vilna. I saw in the house of Rav Chaim Meiser. I was there. And he went there. That was a place. They loved Yochai Meiser. He was our father. Yisrael Lolansky gave us a tour. We were in a bus. A whole bunch of Musanikis got together for a trip. Rabbi Sol Salanta, they were unveiling his, 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 um, his Matseva in Kenningsburg. In the meantime, they took a tour to see Valoja, to see Kelm. I was in Kelm. To see Kovna, to see Vilna. See, Rodden, I saw all these places. I was there. Very big in the Anyway, the, um, what was I saying? So the, um, oh, Rechaim Meiser. See, we can't, so the one who was speaking, he had a, an Abbas, Yusrol Orlansky in Avardiga. The way he spoke, the warmth, the way he spoke, Rechaim Meiser. As the Chavein on the Tata. He was the Tata. Of all the yeshiva guys, they love your Chaimah. He was a father. Ah, the way he talked with such a vamkai, not a vamkai. Anyway, so the um, what was I saying about the um, who? Who? They went collecting. Yes, yeah, so he comes collecting, and he comes to the door. Now on the way, it started pouring, so he kept going. Three days and three nights, the water went coming down, a storm, and Nevada going, it's no problem in my books. In Nevada, that's great. I put the shoes, eh, shoes. But the coat, the, the, the Nevada just don't have normal stuff. They, they're not interested. You want it? I told you what happened as soon as I bought my new hat. My stress, my stress skyrocketed. My old hat, which looked disgusting, I used to put on my head. No, I went outside. I don't care what weather. Have a seat. And as soon as I got my new hat, the nice new hat. Uh oh. No, I didn't hold it right. No, no. What? So the Vardigas weren't interested in, you know, well, let's have a good time in life. So I didn't care what they wore. Gay day if you come. And I'm not telling that, Oilam, please don't do that. Please, I'm just telling historical records. I'm not advising the Olam to do the things I'm saying. However, when we're off the, when we get together, we may decide to do certain things, depending where we're up to. It's a uh, shtick chiyas, these things. Anyway, so he came in soaking, standing at Reb Chaim Eiser's doorstep. And Reb Chaim Eiser took one look at him and he said, Dos no zayna navad again. <laughs> Only Navardi could do this. Sappy, what's the rain? So what? Go! So it's cold, so it's gonna kill you. Now, this is my own experience. I gotta be no Darish no kind. I've had enough criticism. It's still eating me up. The criticism I got, you wanna give me that bottle over there? Now, for all those people that are complaining and they're telling me Mandel says he drinks and all this stuff of drinking, and I, uh, guys, boy, they call me up, Mandel, we're watching you. And Torah anytime. Call my secha, the safe in the thumb. Torah anytime is watching you. And you're talking all day about Jack Daniels with your vodka. We've been watching those bottles for weeks. You guys don't drink to save your lives. Nothing's out. By the way, there are two Jack Daniel bottles. They're not even here. They're empty. So don't say that about me. I'm still very upset. 
that the other should be chayshed me that I don't drink. We can, how could they say that? Anyway, see, we're doing okay, so I want everybody to see. There's bourbon that's moving. And in fact, we're almost empty. So we're, we just got a bottle of courtesy of a chash of a yid, a new bottle of wine. We're, we're okay. We drink. Chasashal. But I don't want to be caught being an endorish, you know, a kind. You know, they call me a hypocrite. You say you drink and you don't drink. You're an hypocrite. You're not a Dairish, vain of a Kayim. It's not right. Right? Okay. So now I want to tell you something about the cold. I spent, ask anybody, and like, if my wife, never, well, my wife has to go to, she married me. You know, I tell, I tell, the whole Eilam goes around saying all day that, I, but having a wife like mine, ain't a Raya Pene Gehenna. <coughs> The Chazal say you got an Ishara, ain't a Raya Pedegera. And I say, mm hmm, maybe your wife also has a Ha'ara. <laughs> maybe being married to you, she's not going to see Gehenna. <laughs> she's able to live with you. She's a Chasher, a great lady, but she's able to live. Anyway, I'm just joking. Anyway, Baba said, Where am I up to? What? The cold? For four years. For sure, four years, maybe more. I did not use a coat in the freezing winter days. I just didn't use it. And my wife used to look at me funny. And I'm not using it. Leave me alone. I'm not using a coat. And just like today, bitter cold, you know, the real thing. I didn't use it. First of all, I daven. You daven, your body will work. It's going to work. I don't know why I did it, but that's what I did. Oh, I, I'll tell you why. I used to lose my coat. I was notorious. <laughs> I lost my coat anyway. So, until I get a new one. I used to, in one winter, I went through four coats. Everybody had the winter. I was up to the fourth coat. In fact, lately, the reason why I am, I suddenly, you know, everybody has different mahalach in his life patterns. Uh, I get more, my brain works better as I get older. I have a different mahalach. I forget less. I'm serious. I'm not joking. I made a decision one day. I'm going to go the other way. Because age is all in the cup anyway. It's all what they tell you. As soon as you hear somebody say, you know, when you get older, you forget. You are going to start forgetting because you heard that from him. Just like the lady, lady that told me, people your age, uh, Corona, uh, COVID, like they very bad. As soon as I came home, I couldn't move for four hours. True story. The power of suggestion, you really keep telling me, you're getting older. Therefore, yeah, yeah, as soon as you be in a walker, about a year or two. <laughs> you're getting there. You have to walk around soon. Pretty soon you won't be able to taste food. I mean, that's the age, you know. You have to accept life as it is, you know. People, you listen to that. Go for it. You like it? Enjoy old age. And you should be able to, I'd say, your life expectancy, don't expect to hang around much longer, two, three years. You know. Say goodbye. You know, look, that's life, you know. To have you ordered a mausoleum? No, what are you ordered? A gravestone? Right. And let's, you know, you have to be practical, you know. There's a little truth over there, but anyway, I don't get so into that stuff. I, I believe you're as young as you want to be. Dalton Vodic said, if not for my beard, I wouldn't know I'm old. Dalton said that. He once told his Talmud, when do you get old? When does that happen? He was simply not into that figure. That's why he was fresh till the end. You know, Rabarin also was fresh till the end. Rabarin covered he was Lebedic till the end. Nothing. These people are... We have to make our own Chabur and go to war against that garbage. Or make an island and move. The Nevadigas used to move to the forest and make their own, they, their own island. That's what they did. You learn, if we would get together, it's our shita. You know, Goyim Lahav were able to do these things. You know, people step on hot coals. There's a guy in L.A. that gets people, don't ask me what he does, he gets people to step on hot coals to say that, and they're fine. How? I don't know. But Mackenzie Khan and Edmund Cup, you know, these far eastern chever, they sit on nails, they, they do weird stuff, but they're, they're happy, you know. What do you mean? I don't know. I know that the Vardigas... The Vardigas sat on this. On that was. There's a lot of Turkish about pet. Chabad has a lot of that stuff too. No suffering about it. See the Bechlal are a little bit. In. The, the the active ones that the the those with ruach, ruach, 
If you have fire, you don't feel the weather. If you're making a million bucks, what weather? I, they saved my life because I'm a big mafunic. By nature, I'm a terrible mafunak. I'm very... <laughs> so, because I come to France and suddenly I can't move. I, I used to get all these psychosomatic stuff. Real or not real, who knows. And I, I just couldn't move. I don't have any kayak. So they told me one word. Oh, you don't have kaya. I, I can't. I'm getting old. This is about 30 years ago. I'm, I'm, I'm getting old. You know, I really felt the mold. And then my foot was hurting. I went up. We had a double deckers over there. And uh, we went to a base of this place, uh, a whole winter resort. That's what they do with the bodies. And going up, and I remember the pain I had going up the rungs of the, um, it was a uh, double decker bed. And I said, oh, son, I'm already like, you know, you know, going 30 years ago, I was very old at that point. And you know, that shut out, but it's, I'm serious, that's how I felt. So they got home, the Vatican saved my life. They said, Oh, you're getting old, yeah? Mm hmm. There's a thousand dollars when it's freezing out, so you can't, you, know, you can't do, you can't, you can't move, and you can't this. There's a thousand dollar check waiting for you in the office, uh, three blocks down. Let's see how you feel. And watch you go running. They proved it to me. It's all in your cup. If you're on fire, you don't have pain. You're in a different world. You don't worry so much what you saying and this saying. You last time for this. Now I want to tell you my thing. Today to hear the story. I spoke about death. So die. I had to tell this. I, I said this to people once. Uh, the very people are so many people who are full of <coughs> fears and fears and fears all over, all over the place. And uh, they suffer all their lives. I have a lot of people like this. And I understand them. There are people calling me. I told one of them, you're one of my favorite customers because I know where you're coming from. This person has some type of a juvenile diabetes, the face turns purple, then migraine headaches. And there's 10 of them. All Guzba. Eight, 10 different real serious stuff going on, and there's so much, and this person's going with sugar. So I told the person, I said, you know, your problem is you should be running a mysid, or you should be building yeshivas all over the world. You wouldn't have time for this garbage. I, I mounted, I called him mysid Shabbos. I says, oh, you have a pre-diabetic? Go eat chocolate cookies. Go. Yes, am I a chryas? Mysid Shabbos, I call up. I had a new person in front of me. It's in your head. Even if it's real, a friend of mine's mother, she was left at 93, I was at the Leviathan. He told me himself, she had diabetes, tomorrow's son, 30 years before she was left at Barach. And she, for 10 years, she had to take this and do that. And finally, one day she said, she was like a Yekish type of lady. I'm not, I have had enough of that stuff. I'm not interested in spending my life, can't eat this, can't eat this, none of that. And she started fressing pizza, all cold of a ossa. She fressed, she lived to 93. The son told it to me. Because her mind, she's, I, I don't believe, yeah, diabetes, don't bother me. She had a bittle against doctors. If you have a bittle against the system, you can do it. But if you're nechtas, tachas, kanfei, the system, that's the way it works. So that's the way the doctor got to work. The more you believe, and that's the matzah, that's going to be the matzah. This I heard in the Vardic, about 20 people were getting a machla. Ten people were told you got two weeks to live. They had the exact same matzah. And ten people were told you got many months to live. All those people that were told you got two weeks to live were dead in two weeks. And all those people were told you got many months to live, they were around and around and around. I heard this, and the body lives on that stuff. They believe it's all in cup and cup and cup. The more you talk, talk about Corona, talk about it all day long. He got it and he got it. Before you turn around, you, you like to talk about it? Go, go ask for trouble. If you, okay, I, sometimes you have to. I'm not going to start up with all these. There's different types around. I'm not going to bite. I'm going to lose half my customer. Yeah, I'm glad a little bit more than a little bit liberal about this, but I respect people who do the shame shemaim. Some people talk and maybe I don't want to get involved in that, but that's for sure. Getting overly to talk about Yisa Bayem and Valila about COVID 19, no good. No good. That's for sure no good.
believing. First of all, I don't believe. You're not allowed to believe that the mask does anything. You have to believe I'm doing ishtadlis. And the mitzvah of ishtadlis is going to help me. The Abish, what do you do? You do this and this shot, this, this. This I will tell you. Everybody knew about this. Everybody talked about it. I didn't make it up. That when the flu shots were given out, they said, the only, all the people who took the shots, they were the only ones who got the flu. I'm serious. It was Yudur. Everyone was, it was the joke. You, you, saw the meat in my cage. You're scared all day. You're asking for trouble. Stop being scared. Bug off. Relax. Enjoy life. Now I do have to speak to a lot of people who are petrified of all different things. People have hard use and they have what to be title. A lot of people in the younger years, different things happen to them that stress that now it comes out in late days. I heard this, I'll tell you. When the rabbits and she was the halix of rabbits and she's about ten years older than me. She was t- crying her heart out to me about her younger years having knocked her too much. It doesn't fly away. You're used to this, aren't you? Until today, she says. So, sometimes you could die to say that. It might make you matchstick things you do. You won't be mashing yourself so much because of your background. You're, you're talking not. You can't knock so much. But I prefer keeping away. I prefer to laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and enjoy life. Let's have a good time. It's great. Stock up. They once did this. I'm a, right now, I'm at the top of the world. Don't bother me. I'm going to tell you a story about death. This is a story. There's a safe called Ashkafta the Rey, the Vey Rav. The Vey Rebbe, the Vey Rav. You know who that is? The Rashab. Reb Shalom Bear. The, who was the Friedrich Labavitch, the Rebbe's father, who was very close with the Alta from the Vada. They spent four hours together. All, the whole world talked about what went on between those two. So, it was very good. It was good. There was Chaim Briske. The Rashab was a grain and a tzaddik. It was a healing event. The kids are... <laughs> anyway, so what happened? So, so he got together. He was alone. The Rashab was alone with the elder. Okay. Now, it was Purim. And something happened on Purim in Chabad. What happened? Those days, they didn't have what they had in 77. Seven. Those days, the whole Chabad was a house, and that was it. The dining room of the, of the Rashab, they had a dining room, and the Chassidim came in at 50. I don't know how many they had. It wasn't even that. I, I don't know. Couldn't have been too much of a Chassidim those days. I don't know. But anyway, what did he do? He's sitting there in his dining room, and he's he's sitting there in his dining room, and suddenly the KGB decides to give to uh, pay them a visit. Those days it was called the NKVD. NKVD is coming in. You know what that means? You know what that means? Siberia for the rest of your life. These people were ace of a Russia's eight o'clock. And a KGB guy is coming, and they, and he's a middle of now. They get caught making a meeting together, collecting money. They had a whole plate collecting money for their meisters. Forget it. They were, they'd be finished. Shemirach. So as soon as the guy started coming in, the <coughs> Rashab, they told the Rashab, he's, he's coming into the house. Rashab started laughing. Rashab said, so? I'm not scared of him. This house is so much kedusha. We can't do anything to this house. Then he had a special room called the cabinet, where they used to have meetings, I believe. It was a Heiliger room where they, they got together for the... You know these pieces of Chabatsky Yidin, when Rabbi Miller speaks about the greatness of the Russian Lubavitches, where they gave their lives away for the Abish there. It wasn't partial, but they did that. And collecting money in front of... Anyway... So his son was all nervous, the Mariatz. He was not the Rebbe then, he was his son. And he took a handkerchief and put it on top of the, of the money that they had just collected. And he's shaking all over. And his father's laughing at him. He gets up. He came into the house. KGB guy. 
and he's walking from room to room, and the place is all shaking, and the Rebbe's lifting his head off. The Rebbe says, ah, he's bottled. There's so much kedusha here, this man's bottled. And then he walked into the cabinet. Cabinet, they called it. The cabinet was a place where they had major meetings. It was a hey, look at plot. He used to learn there a lot. A lot of Torah, a lot of Amnath, whatever it was. So he, they told him, I gave some cabinet. He says, cabinet? He's buckled him a mutal, some cabinet. Cabinet's a hey, look at place. And sure enough, he took a step in. He walked out and disappeared. They never saw him again. Okay. That was a nice thing. That night, it was on Purim that the story happened. That night, the Rashab started writing. He started answering certain svarim. He spent the whole night certain svarim. He was writing, so something was happening. Later on, a couple of months later, he was deathly ill. He was deathly young, the Rashab. He was deathly ill. And they, later on, they found that poor him night, he seemed to know he was going to go. Of course, all the svarim he asked for, that was the will that he wrote. It was a permit, whatever. And before you turn around, it got worse and worse. The doctor came, and he, and he was in bed, and holding up. Dog. And then his son, his son, Mariatz, is watching his father. And suddenly, his father starts closing his eyes. And he realized it's over. And when he saw it's over, he started screaming. Tata, Tata! And something like this. I don't have the story in front of me. I had I had this thing. I, I as a saver called Ashkafta de Rav. It's Kedai. It's a Merdik Chachim. And Tata Tata, you stop! You, you, his father's dying. It killed him. So he started screaming at his son. He was screaming. He's dying. His last words. He was screaming at his son. What exactly he said? He said Moshe Moshe. I don't know these Kabbalistic. Terms, I don't know, but he was telling him all, What are you to spell from? So I'm dying. May of us. <laughs> May of us. I'm dying. So I'm going to die. May of <laughs> The son, father, why? Well, you got, have to read up the story. It's murder, the mice. So, uh, stop it. <laughs> he died. So, what's the hell? I'm getting so. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. We hope we'll live longer. Every minute of life is such a gift, it's such a matana, it's such a bracha. How can you compare, complain every minute it's such a ganadin? Being the Amish is a delicious world. Let me tell you something. A young man comes over to me. Got to hear this one. This one's kedai to hear. All boys is kedai to hear. A young man came over to me. He called me up from Australia 10 years ago. His wife is going berserk. <coughs> They have a daughter who's not Sneas. And his wife is going out of a kalim. What's the matter with your wife? She's going berserk. She can't handle it. She, his wife, he described his wife like, if the Rachli Meno comes, his wife. She was like nobody. A love for Yiddish kind. A woman who can stand two hours straight and daven on a regular basis. And cry a heart out today, Ah, whatever, something like that. And he's telling me, telling me that about his wife. And now the daughter is walking around with chutzpah, and she's making fun of everything. And, she, and his mother, his wife is vice mensch. So this is what I said, my dear friend. There's two dinim over here. Look, I advise people to hear this before they have issues. Listen to I'm going to challenge the total world. There's what the Alta from the body calls Piske Balabatim and then there's Das Torah. There's the Balabas's way of thinking which unfortunately most of us are Balabatish. Very few people are really Torah. We're Balabatish we're like simple people. I'll explain it in a minute. First thing I said like this. This woman has to thank Hashem two billion times for being what she is. To be such a tzaddikis and such a dar, there's no end to the thankfulness. She for being herself, she could have been like the daughter, the cool cat, who's wearing pants. I don't know what she's doing. 
she could have been like the daughter. And the Vila, she's a tzaddikist. Did she ever say thank you that she's a tzaddikist? Well, that's the way I am. What do you mean that's the way you are? Then my parents raised me. Hey, you know what a glick it is to be raised in such a matzah? And then you look at yourself. Look at your tzaddikist. Lady, where's the thank you for being a tzaddikist? Well, I'm not really such a tzaddikist. Oh, the, the old problem. Here we go again. Oh, oh, you're an honor. Anova is the Churban of the universe. I'm saying there's no suffering in my mind. The Altman Slobotka is jumping in his grave with Simcha that someone's saying the truth. Especially the Alta from Slobotka, who he put a campaign. All the Daily Show came, came out of Slobotka because he hocked him, cup, you great, cut it out with this Anova. The Anova is a Churban. What are you doing? So, I'm not really so good. Aha. Uh-huh. So just like you put yourself down, you're going to put your daughter down because it's the same Mahalach. It's a be negative. That's the yikka. Be negative. Anyway, so first thing you can't say this to the lady. I never said this to this lady. I didn't say it to her husband either. I'm just telling you, these, this is the answer to the problem that was given to me ten years ago from an Australian yid, and this is what I have to say about it. You have. To, where's your thankfulness? You're not even into it. All you think about is your daughter, your daughter, your daughter. Your daughter, you go to sleep, the daughter. You get up, the daughter. Get up, the daughter. I can't eat anymore because my daughter. I can't talk anymore. My daughter, my daughter. Blah, blah, blah. Aware with the fact that you're alive and well. No, no. What do you mean? You're moving. You ever say thank you? Okay, anyway. You can't, you can't knock people for what I'm saying now. I'm saying this. You cannot ever tell people the way I'm talking. It's disgusting. Leave them alone. They didn't go to learn in a body. Leave this poor lady alone. Let her be what she is, and she'll get her Elam Haba without listening to Mandel. But if you want to be smart, before you have any problems, this is the right way to think. And you got to do this throughout your life. What you do have, you have to sit on it every day. You have to mush yourself. You know, I have a lot of successes every day. And I, they all go over my head. They all go over my head. They, like it never happened. Someone came over, they gave me a big shvach. Oh, I, I smiled, but then... I was just not even, I didn't even hear that we're all like that. It's a churban. Thankfulness is mes mitzvah. It's a churban. You have to dig in this day and night. You got to thank the image of every inch. Okay. So part one is you got to thank. Now part two. There's a younger man. He has ten sons who all went to brisk, all got the best shaduchim. He has one <coughs> daughter who's a nasty little witch. A short girl who felt always short chains and chip on her shoulder, always hated her mother, loud mouth, and does things that are not Yiddish. And in front of guests, she opens up a big mouth and embarrasses the whole family, crushes the family. And the younger man comes over to me and he says, Man, don't, by the way, this story I made up. <laughs> the younger man comes over to me and tells me, Man, don't, I have such a good life. But this daughter kills it. I have no life. I can't live with her. My wife and her are killing each other. And me, she doesn't talk to me. And That's all the guy talks about. And uh, you have ton. He says, yeah, I, my boys are big nachis. They all went to Brist. They said, you know, did my son marry? He got married to so-and-so's daughter. And this got married to he got the, He got a rich shidduch. He got a nice shidduch. And he said, I'm learning 10 years after you, 5 years after you, I learned about Sephardic Rabbits. He's got everything. This guy's Gavald. That guy's Gavald. But what should I do? This girl is Gefella. Now listen to me, Rabbi Say. I'm going to tell you, das, that's Das Balabayas. We all do this. You want to hear Das Teira? Moshe Kapoya. But Avaychu, you have ten nice sons. I'm very happy about it. But your glick of your life is that nasty little witch of a daughter. She is your nachas. Because she's the only one in the family that's going to force you to open up a safer on Kaz, a safer on being down the Kaz safer on learning how to be civil people that are different than you. A safer on business if people remark that you're not having nachas, that you are covered, that you don't have to, your holy, holy covered is killing you. You mean this, you are born for your mean this, not for those ten sons. Now look, it's, don't listen to Mandel. How can you talk like that? 
I was born for my children. Else is the kinder. I remember Rabbi Dishon, he once spoke here in Lakewood. He was telling the Elam to care for both of the kids. What do we have if not our children, our children? And he's right. And you have to hear that shavuz. And I agree with him a million percent, but now here comes my shavuz. My shavuz is a little different in age. And some people have to hear mine. Elu ve'elu, there is a truth in all directions. But there is a campaign. A guy who's suffering for sure has to hear my shavuz. What do you do with this kid? And he's, so you have to horrify him, meet this, and then you'll shtay. I think it was Rav Nekritz that they said he had a child that wasn't well. He said that my favorite child. Now you can stay. Learn how to be calm even though he's screaming at you. Like there's no fun. These guys all listen to whatever I do. There's no tech. You can't stay. You can't become anything. I know a guy. You must have a nasty person in your life if you want to become anything. So a real Balmosa would say just the opposite. I have a nice family but my real nachas is that girl. That's the nachas of my life. Thanks to her, I became, I worked at my cast for the first time in my life. My wife was no fun. She was too nice to me, so I couldn't, there was no witch next to me. You can't get your with a nice lady. A nice lady, it's nice to have you, but lady, you're no fun. Uh, I was hoping when I first got married, you'd take a bat, put it over my head. You know, there's a famous Gera Maisa like that. The Gera see them, his name was Matasio Kozak. He wanted his dream in life was getting his wife the witch. And he got her. And boy, did she do a job. There's a famous, uh, the, 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 the Gerach see them, they grew up on this stuff. They understand breaking me. This are the same. They and Nevada get along very well. So, so you, you have it, you have it. So, my glick in my life is that child or my wife is the glick in my life. The one who's, somebody gotta mess you up. The shved, the wife. Or else, why, well, come on, you're wasting, what are you doing here? You have to break your midas. It's more important than anything else. It's to break the midas and not to be the spoil what your kid says and to love the child and turn the child around. You want to hear a true story? I'll tell you a true story. Somebody had us. Somebody from England called me up. Terrible matzo. Have a boy who is looking at things you're not supposed to look at. And he asked me, What should I do? And I says, He's a teenage kid. He, yeah. He ain't going to listen to words you say. No way. You don't start up with him. And he hates my wife. And he hates my Eddie's a dancer. And he, not, he doesn't daven. He doesn't learn. He doesn't nothing, nothing. I said, Don't open your mouth ever. Ever, 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 ever. Your only connection with your boy is, would you like a chocolate bar? Here. That's all I have to do with him. I have a chocolate bar. Yes. Oh, oh I, I like that coat. That's cool. <laughs> Don't discuss anything he, of his habits. He knows he's doing wrong. Don't bite around with him. It's, the guy never opened his mouth. Never. The kid did things. He once took a peek. What's he looking at? He put home the shemira. I forbade him to tell his wife. You talk to your wife, say nice stuff about him. Oh, isn't he good? And I told him, you tell when you're davening to the Abishta, you're going to daven about him? Yes. You're going to say, oh, Abishta, thank you so much. Such a masmid I have in my house. Such a masmid. He leagues in learning. Such a he's kind. He's so yeah, this went on for months and months and months and months and months. He was an action. Once in a while, he dominated. I fought, let's have it. Let's have May <laughs> After fought, let's have a normal kid over here. But all the time, he's so good. People ask, oh, he's doing wonderful. Yes, my, oh, my son, my favorite. Oh, Nachas, a real, real Nachas. I love him. And that's it. And to the son also, he spoke like that. The son kept telling him, Ta, you know I have issues. Oh, cut the issue business. You don't have issues. You're a normal guy. Now, if the son saying I have issues means we're ready to work, that's a different ball game. That's not called negative. That means a lamaisa is a lamaisa. You want to see a therapist. Like, that wasn't the case. The son just wanted to fetch a little bit and tease his father. 
What issues? You fuck. Oh, stop it. You're going to grow out of that. I know you. You're this. The son says, Ta, stop lying. All right, so, so don't bother me. So he doesn't say nothing to, this, to the son. But when he speaks to the Avishta, so did not. You know what happened to this kid? Slowly but surely, he turned around. One day he sees him open up a Gemara, running for hours straight past the mother. Oh, how did that happen? When the father's quiet, and he has to talk him, and he doesn't get angry, all the bad midas. You know what kind of midas take place with parents and kids? Nakama, Kas, Gaiva, Ainas, Dvarim, it's all... But you have to be mechanach. Yeah, yeah, you have to be mechanach. And you, while you're being mechanach, you know, Nelson once told me, Mitzlech to me this, you're not going to be mechanach anybody. By the way, I heard B'Shem, a, a big mashgiach, that if you're going to be so particular to do it, everything right, you may end up going nowhere. You, can, you will get a little angry here and there. Don't turn yourself into a bum. But basically, this works. I've seen Rabbi do a thing like this. Boy, did he have a turn around in his family. Did everything turned around. He didn't say a word for a year. He had two boys that were, and they turned around and became, how they end the biggest toxic in the world. When I came to this, I lost all my respect in him. He doesn't take care of his kids. But he opened his mouth. He was laughing. He was like oozing out. He was learning Batakim day and night. You could feel the Batakim. He told me years later, Tipeshis day. It's a stage, Rabbi. And keep saying it. You know, Sean Shodron once told somebody had trouble with a teenage kid. I'm a mach for them garnished. That was garnished. Say it's nothing, it becomes nothing. And you can do the same thing with your body. When you have pain in your foot, my rabbeim told me that many times. It worked like a fiddle. It's nothing. Keep saying it's nothing. And before you turn around, oh, I once had, oh, so scary. Huh? It's gone. The stockler said this then. If he would have addressed all his aches and pains, he would have been in the NFL a long time ago. The doctor would have said, oh, you're right, and we got it. Once you sit on it and think about it all day and worry about it all day, it expands. It becomes real. It exists. Think, same thing with your problems. Talk about your problem all day. You got a problem. It's got to be there. But being a Sir Taz, laugh at it, and it dis- disappears. I said a murder about about We had a sense of humor, us Religious Jews have a sense of humor. Starting from Avraham Avinu. Boy, was he funny, Avraham Avinu. He took, you know, the Chazal, where, where they were, where the idols in his father's store. And he said, oh, he put a bat into the biggest idol's hand. Uh, and then he said, you see, Ta. No, it was his fault. I, the father comes, Avraham, what did you do? You smashed all the idols. Ta. You see the big guy? The biggest idol? See, they gave him a bowl, they gave him a, you know, a big plate of food, and he, he wanted it for himself. So he, and all the other guys try to get it, and he smashed them all up. It's his fault. Oh, God, don't tell me. This is a chazal. Avram Avinu was kidding around. Did he have a sense of humor? Yes or no? Did Eliezer Avram, did he have a sense of humor when, you know, my super, he was in Sudan, and the guy tells him, uh, he was in Sudan, and the, um, yeah, yeah, the guy, has stone, he throws a rock at Eliezer's uh, head, and blood comes out, and he says, now you owe me $100 because I gave you blood. I called you blood. So he said, what do you mean? And that's how it works in Stein. Oh, thank you so much. Look what's going on here. The Hayim. Out of way. So in Stein, in Stein, the men I give, make blood come out of you. You pay me money. Oh, very interesting, Eliezer Rump. We'll take care. So you want to bring me? Yes, you're coming to court. And he said, Judge, what? Yes, you have to pay him money because he made you. Oh, Judge, okay. Just one second, Judge. Eliezer says, he picks up a rock, throws it in the judge's head. Judge starts bleeding. Okay, Judge, now you owe me, right? You go pay him. <laughs> then there's the other story where at the chasana, you know, whoever, you invite someone at the chasana, you're dead. You're not allowed to invite someone at the chasana, right? In, in Stein, you made some of the, so he sits down at the chasana, and a cop comes over, and he says, how'd you get here? He invited me. <laughs> the guy runs away. The next time a cop comes, he invited me. <laughs> they all run, and he invited me, he invited me. But he saw you turn around, the place is empty, and he has it from locked the doors, he ate up all the food. But, but These are jokes! 
They didn't have a sense of humor. Shere salalti be mitzrayim. What was salalti Hashem? Yoshev Shmaim Yitzchak. The Eibush the laughs. If she doesn't have a sense of humor, come on. The story would. Oh, maybe yet. Miriam comes running to a bossy boss party. Oh, you need somebody to nurse. Oh, I have a lady. And pay her a nice buck. She doesn't know how to make money. <laughs> pay some money to, to the mother of little Maishala. And we'll, we'll work it out. No? You, you know. Yeah, it's funny. Elias and Abram. What did he do? And, and then the frogs with their smiles, the sinister smiles, laughing, aiming at powering, going to his bike, and then talking to each other inside the bike. Jews are funny people. I mean, it's all over the territory. The Elias and Abram is standing there by by over there by um by Har Kamel and he says and Ram says um uh there's no fire coming from Baal, you know. You know they had there were two oxen, one like Shem, one not so this. So he said the uh, I got it. Let's see if fire come oh how come it's not coming? Oh your God's in the toilet. Oh he's up off and up sucking. Let's lose off it. We Jews are funny people. I brought your rice all over the place. It's time to laugh. Laugh the stupidity of Elam Hazer, of the Yitzhara. That's a shame. They was over. Bring back the Vadi. Hold tight for a Hazer. I will laugh. When Mashiach said, Kainam, I'm very, 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 very,